It's a Tesla Model 3, full self-driving 12.3.3, saying supervised software, no longer beta. It's a Tesla Model 3, 2024 model, just purchased a few weeks ago. I'm using the uh, free trial FSD as they've not managed to transfer my FSD from my previous Model Y yet. They say they're working on that. We're on Poinciana Boulevard in South Kissimmee, Florida. And I'll go ahead and activate the FSD and see how that goes. It says keep your hands on the wheel, so I'm going to keep them close, but I notice it only rarely does the usual nag of asking you to touch the steering wheel or move the little volume control buttons to show you're still alive using primarily the camera. I've got the sunglasses, so I guess it can't really track my eyes, but it at least knows which way my head is focused. And of course, I am going to watch the road because sometimes this thing is unpredictable and this is a new version just released, so no telling what it might do. Got it in the average progressiveness mode. I had in chill mode last night. It does a reasonable job, but sometimes the drivers in Florida aren't always that friendly. And I was driving on uh, State Highway 417, which is the loop highway around Orlando yesterday, with a lot of traffic merged onto the highway, and that lane was going to disappear and people intentionally tried to keep me from merging over and eventually the FSD had to send me back on an off-ramp rather than continuing on the highway because there was just no way to merge. Another time I was merging on to Highway 528 on the way to Cocoa Beach and it didn't look like there was enough room to merge over and the merge lane was about to disappear and the car sped up and slipped into a fairly small hole driving a lot more aggressively than I would have probably driven, but it did manage to do it without an accident. Normally I would slow down under those circumstances and get the uh, malcontents the right of way so there would be some space behind. But the FSD merged over with less than a few car lengths left in that lane, which again was more aggressive than I would have done. It turned out okay since there was no accident, but I wouldn't exactly call that a safe maneuver. Because if the other cars had not been cooperative, there would have been no place to go and I would have been off the road. Wish I'd had the video running for that one, but I guess I'll try to video a little bit more just to see and show to other people that haven't used FSD or maybe have not been in a Tesla how exactly it goes. So I've got it set to change lanes if it can have more than a five mile an hour difference. Frequently, it'll turn on the turn signal and act like it wants to change but the uh, lane, and, uh, and then it'll abort the lane change either because of traffic or because somebody speeds up. That's twice now it's turned on the left turn signal without actually doing the merge. And there is no traffic preventing the merge, but apparently the speed advantage is marginal, and now it actually makes the change. The speed limit here is 55, and I was down around 52, 53 behind that other car. But many times if there's closing traffic, it will cancel the lane change. But it's not unusual to see the turn signal turn on two or three times before it either gives up or actually does the lane change. This probably confuses other drivers, but oh well student driver in progress, right? So it slowed down a little more aggressively than it needed to there. On we go. keeping one foot hovering over the brake and a hand pretty close to the wheel and you'll notice there have been no nags to touch the steering wheel to show I'm here so that's certainly an improvement but 
especially with new versions, you need to be pretty alert. While it mostly drives in a human-like man manner, it's kind of disconcerting when you're not the one driving and you really don't know for certain what it's going to do. Sometimes, as you can see here, it follows a little bit close, more closely than I usually follow. I did notice something earlier today coming up on an intersection that had no traffic signal or lights. There was a lot of traffic. It was bumper to bumper. And rather than pulling up right behind the car ahead of me, it waited at the end of the intersection in case there was some crossing traffic that wanted to um, come through that intersection. So that was sort of a polite thing to do. And I didn't realize that the FSD had that capability. Now there's a left turn coming up ahead here, but we still moved over to the right, maybe because traffic behind us was closing on us and it wanted to be polite and let them through. But it's going to have to get back into that left lane to make the left turn less than a mile ahead. So let's see. SUV closing the distance in the left lane right now, preventing a left lane change. So it's either going to have to speed up or slow down to make some room. So let's see how it does. Will it make the turn or the lane change? There's a little bit of left turn lane, but it's kind of skinny up ahead. But here we are in the right turn. So it's slowing down, put on the turn signal, and over we go. So that worked out. So that was a discovered stop as a car changed lane, revealing another car that was stopped ahead. We handle that okay. So we'll let it make this turn and then we'll deactivate the FSD. And see how the left turn lane is a little subtle here. Turn signal on, waiting on the light. So I'm filming this with a Insta360 360 degree camera. I'll include the link in the description below. It's kind of handy because you can record whatever. It doesn't really matter where you point the thing within reason. And you do all the real pointing in the post editing step, which I generally do on the computer. They do have an app that you could use in a pinch, but I find it easier to use the 360 Studio app that comes with uh, the camera. They just recently updated the app to allow actual editing so you can do the entire project in the app. But for the most part, I do the reframing on the app and then use Final Cut Pro for the actual editing. Mainly because I'm just a little more familiar with that app. Still waiting on the light. It does have a left turn signal, but many times you have to scoot across when that left turn signal is turned off. So this is the intersection of Poinciana Boulevard with uh, US 192 
also known as the Erlo Bronson Memorial Highway or Vine Street. It's the main tourist drag in Kissimmee. It heads off to the entrance to the Kissimmee Parks, to the Disney Parks. Okay, we got the left turn green light. Let's see if we can make it. On we go. And there it goes. Turned into the middle lane. Now I will deactivate the autopilot. That's it for today. See you next time.